Joining me right now is House Majority Whip Congressman Steve Scalise. And Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Good morning, Maria. You, it's so, great to be here. It's great to have you here. And I know that you're now, you're going to be in town closer to Christmas than you expected now with this continuing resolution in terms of funding the government. Can you give us any color on what takes place in the next two weeks in terms of funding the rest of the government? Yeah, because right now we've got over 70% of the government fully funded for the entire fiscal year, and most importantly, our Department of Defense. So defense is fully funded. The troops will not be used as pawns like they have been in previous uh, shutdown showdowns. Uh, we really have a big dispute right now over Homeland Security's uh, budget, and really it becomes a battle over funding the wall. I fully support the president's request for $5 billion this year to continue building the wall out. And, and given it's not just about the wall, too, there's a lot of technology uh, support that our Border Patrol agents need to be safe in protecting America's border. And I think that's a critical issue uh, when you look at the caravan that's coming, when you look at uh, over 600 criminals, convicted criminals, part of that caravan. The president wants to keep America safe and he wants the tools to be able to successfully do that. We ought to give it to him. Yeah, but I mean, there are a number of Republicans, not just Democrats, Republicans that are not getting behind this $5 billion that the president is requesting. Well, most Republicans have been supportive of it. Obviously, on the Democrat side, that's where we've seen pushback. And, you know, when they push back against entire border security, Maria, yeah. I think it's a bad position for them to take uh, because ultimately America, regardless of where people feel about immigration, most Americans think we ought to secure the border. Uh, as we see in the Democrat caucus, not everybody agrees even with border security. Some of them want open borders, but that's not where America is. And it would be dangerous for them to take a position against border security. That's what this fight's going to be about. Which is why I don't understand how Nancy Pelosi can say a wall is immoral. But that's what she said. Yeah, what, what is she saying about every other country in the world that has right. their own form Where's of border borders? security? You know, you know, a lot of these co countries where people are coming from don't have open borders themselves. So not really sure what she's talking about, but it shows you her agenda really is about open borders. She said that, you know, they support abolishing ICE. Yeah. Again, these are the agents that are saving over 900 kids from human trafficking. She wants to get rid of them. Let me, let me move on to trade, and this is obviously one of the big issues in terms of markets and open issues. The U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer saying that this 90-day trade truce with China is a hard deadline. He says there will be additional tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods if a satisfactory deal is not reached. Uh, I also spoke with the assistant to uh, the president for trade policy, Peter Navarro, yesterday, and he said the prospects for a deal with China look good and the effect on, of tariffs is not really impacting the market. Listen to what he said. We all know the tariffs were your idea. People are worried that these higher tariffs are cutting into uh, companies' ability to grow because input costs are going higher. That's crushing profit margins and hurting the stock market. So what are you going to do about it? So, um, first of all, I think that's a false narrative in terms of the impact of the tariffs on the stock market. My view is that this is strictly an interest rate effect. I think the Fed went too far too fast and what we saw basically was a little asset reallocation from the stock to the bond market. We've had some impact on the housing market in terms of the, the dollar. It's too strong now and that's exacerbated our trade deficit. But this is a normal adjustment. To me it's not even a correction. You have to remember where we started from back on election day. Uh, we, we've come thousands and thousands and thousands of points uh, forward. And on uh, the day after election, Maria, uh, I predicted that we would go to 25,000 on the Dow. A lot right. of people laughed at me at the time. Right. We got and, and we have gone to heights in the stock market, as I also predicted we would, because of your tax cut plan. Yeah. Because of your business-friendly economic policies, which really moved the needle on things. So congratulations to you and your colleagues, Kevin Brady at, at House Ways and Means. But look at now, Steve. What, what, what about these tariffs, Congressman, in terms of impacting corporations' ability to grow? Yeah, Maria, the, the overall trade policy, I think, is real important. It was, it was encouraging that the president got an agreement with Mexico and Canada. Because it did show uh, that the administration can actually work with some of our allies uh, to ultimately get better trade deals for America. It's all been about China, really. When you talk to our allies around the world, they all know that China's the real uh, big fish that you've got to go catch if you're going to get free trade. And so the fact that they've got this 90 day detente, hopefully that means they're getting closer. I don't want to see tariffs uh, being used long term. Uh, if they're being used short term to get a better deal for America, okay. And, and at least we're starting to see some results. Canada, we 
were concerned about the tariffs there. Now we have an agreement with Canada. Yeah, and hopefully that Justin resolves some Trudeau, of those issues. Justin Trudeau said, look, these tariffs have to go away. There's an op-ed in the journal today say, yeah, we have a signed agreement between Canada and Mexico, so get rid of the tariffs all, already. And we've had on a number of Democrats who say, we're not going to sign USMCA the way it is right now. So will these tariffs go away? Or do you think, not, not tariffs with China, I get what the president's no. trying to do, tariffs elsewhere. Is that impacting the economy poorly? Well, hopefully it, it does go away. I mean, you, you heard the president uh, go to our European friends and say, look, we'll drop all of our tariffs if you drop all of yours. Right. Uh, so it shows you. I mean, we don't want tariffs either, but other countries are using tariffs against us. And let's remember that, too. This is about okay. breaking down the walls and having better ability to get into markets. A lot of it, I don't know many countries that have barriers of entry to our markets. We have a lot of barriers of entry if you're trying to sell American goods elsewhere. Let's knock all the tariffs down on both sides and get better agreements. But in the meantime, if in the short term, tariffs can be used to bring China to the table, to get them to stop stealing our intellectual property. And even these agreements uh, that if you're an American company, you want to go to China, you basically have to turn your shop over to them. Yeah. And so let's, let's try to get in an agreement where we fix and address those problems. Hopefully it happens in this 90-day period. Do you think you're going to be able to get USMCA passed in terms of the votes? Will you have the votes there, or do you think the Dems are going to make you change it, make the president change the current USMCA deal? You know, on the Republican side, I think clearly we can produce a majority of our majority that uh, understand this is a better deal for America. On the Democrat side, that's going to be a big question because, look, the labor unions want this, too. Uh, this is a business and labor agreement, which doesn't happen often. And so if that's the case, usually you can get an agreement where both sides can bring votes to the table. Uh, it's still early because we haven't seen the formal agreement uh, that would be presented to Congress. But once that's presented, there is a, a short-term shot clock, basically, that it's on. So, you know, I, I think it's a better deal. Let's see if we can get it. Do you think we're going to see a change in the relationship between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia with MBS running the Saudis? Yeah, this is a very complicated issue because I'm concerned about what I've seen uh, in relation to what the Saudi government knew and what they did. And, and I think more is going to continue to come out. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's a relationship where they've, they've been an ally of ours in many of the things we've done in the Middle East. But this is a serious violation, uh, what they did. I mean, this murder has it's to incredible. be addressed. Brutal. Congressman, it's good to see you. Great being Thank with you Thank you so again, much, Maria. Congressman Steve Scalise. We'll be right back.